So let's do it. Hello, this is the patch. Uh, it's 7.21c. Uh, this is my first read through. I haven't, um, I haven't read this through yet, except for seeing like these first two. So I'm gonna make mistakes, just so you guys know. Uh, sure, Elfo Dota, just uh, send it to my business email. I'll take a look. Um, so let's go through it and see what has changed. I watched a pretty good amount of Dota in the last month because I went to WePlay first, then I went to ESL. Uh, I haven't watched much Dota in the last week, Pro Dota, but um, I feel like I have a decent grasp on the meta, so I feel like I can be fairly informative. Hannah Midas uh, getting nerfed again. People are still buying the thing. Um, this is a pretty big reduction, really, considering this was at 200. Um, now it's down to 160, so this is like a reduction of 20% in terms of the gold bonus. So uh, pretty big nerf to the item. Um, drum of Endurance recipe cost increased by 100. Drum is really popular right now on a couple cores. Just because of the movement speed change, it made a big difference. It's really valuable on a lot of different heroes. So it makes sense. A bad and miss coil damage and heal is increased by a little bit. A lot level 1 and just a little bit later on. Hypothetically, you could abuse this. Um, let me check his numbers in game really quick. A bad and the first hero. So this means 120 damage. It's a... Pretty spammable nuke, arguably. I know there was a period of time where Abaddon could just go to the offlane and spam Mist Coil. Maybe we could see something similar. Maybe that's what Ice Fargo is trying to tell us. Like, hey guys, fucking use Mist Coil in the early game. It's good. Oh, that's unfortunate. You can see everything. Um, let's do... Um, but yeah, that's what this kind of looks like, like a please use this in the early game. Um, the fact that it's the same late game is fine, but Abaddon's in this weird place, kind of like Omni, where they're, they're kind of designed around being like support heroes, kind of, in the sense that they heal allies and stuff, but players found that it was just better to play them as like tanky offlane heroes because they're strength heroes, and then you just buy Radiance and heal yourself repeatedly is what ends up being better usually. So, um, yeah. I am still not sold on the heroes being anything other than offlane heroes, but I would like it for them to be in that position because I do kind of like playing heal bot sort of heroes. I think it's fun. Um, acid spray, radius increase, very, very small buff to the hero. This will help you with like farming, harassing heroes, trading with enemy heroes, like laning stuff basically um, is slightly better. A int gain has gone up, so more mana. I think this is kind of needed because of the third skill. Chilling Touch, I don't know, what's, what's it called? No, I can't remember. The third skill for AA is actually really expensive mana-wise, so having a higher end gain means you're going to be able to have a bigger mana pool in the mid-game. Same thing with spamming um, Ice Vortex. It just costs a lot of mana to cast everything. So, And the duration for Ice Blast is increased by one second, which is pretty nice. Um, Bounty Hunter agility gain is reduced. Bounty has been pretty good. Um, he got picked at Play as a core. I think he had, it had been done before that, but also played as offlane hero. Wasn't like the most dominant hero at ESL, but it was played a little bit. So I think the agility gain nerf is completely fine. The hero can kind of uh, match net worth with cores without getting last hits. Um, if you get a lot of, if you're if you're a core position and you have a decent laning stage, and then you just start roaming around and slapping people and getting track gold, it's kind of kind of abusive. I'm not not really sure that um, a baton will be a thing necessarily just because of this. But this is a lot of damage, and it only costs 50 mana and 75 health, or 70 health, or whatever. I think it's like 75 health level 1. So it costs you health and mana, but you could potentially spam this a lot to kind of zone somebody out of lane, or you could use it just to guarantee last hits, for example. So maybe there's some potential here, but Abaddon has no armor at the start of the game, so I'm not really sold on it being good. But maybe I'll poke around with it a little bit. Broodmother agility gain increased. His level 15 talent went up by 5 agility too, so right click brood is going to be a little bit more viable, but not that much more. A little bit more armor. That's kind of actually where some, one, one place where brood kind of suffers. You don't really usually buy the many agility items on the hero. So your raw armor is not super high, you end up going like BKB, Deso kind of stuff usually. But I don't know, maybe there's some kind of an agility build option in here. But all of his talents are so good. His other one I think is CDR at 15, if I'm not mistaken. Chen Divine Favor bonus damage reduced. 
at all levels, actually. And the Divine Hero non-hero damage multiplier increased again. A little surprised about this, because basically the way that this works is before, if you're casting this on a creep, it'd be 48 times 2. So do this much damage. Now it's going to be 32 times 3. Okay, same numbers. So it's equally as good on creeps, but it is much less good on heroes. Um, which is kind of interesting, because this skill started off being plus 80 damage to heroes. And now it's all the way down to 32. So um, that aspect of Chen is probably still a little too good. Um, Chen is popular right now because of his ability to um, kind of win lanes, uh, push towers, that kind of thing. Um, but it's they're basically discouraging Maxine Divine Favor first, unless you're going to use it just for creeps, in which case it's exactly as good as it was before. Um, and people will probably still play Chen. This isn't really that much of a nerf, to be honest, because it's what, 72... Yeah, it's, it's basically, it's gonna probably the same numbers at all levels. So it's the same for creeps at all levels. So you can put it on siege creeps, things like that. Um, silence cast point reduced a little bit. Crypt Swarm, mana cost reduced quite a bit. So you can cast this better at level one, level two. And level 15 talent cast range has gone up. Um, one of the problems with this Death Prophet is she's actually pretty hard to lane, I think. Um, her animation is pretty garbage, her damage is okay. And um, Crypt Swarm was kind of mana expensive. 85 is better, but it still only does 75 damage at level 1, so it's not like a guaranteed last hit like Dragon Slave was for Lina, for example. At least in the past. I guess Dragon Slave is weaker now. It's not as good as it used to be at level 1. Um, but I'm pretty sure it still only does 75 damage. So I don't think DP is that strong of a laner yet. She's not really there yet, unfortunately. But um, this will make a little bit of ground towards making her good again. Um, Elder Titan National Spirit bonus damage from creeps reduced, so um, much worse at level 1. This is actually a pretty big nerf because this is like 12 damage. If there's 4 creeps, it's like 1 creep wave, um, you're losing f uh, 12 damage. And then at level 2, you are losing 8. But the damage does go up a lot between level 1 and level 2. So it'll be the same against heroes, but... Um, basically, with uh, stacking a lot of neutrals, this is going to be way way less good, especially before you hit level 3. So if you're like level 2, it's not going to be nearly as abusive. You actually need to hit, get like 2 points in before it ends up being really effective. So it'll really limit that aspect of it. It'll still be weaker for the laning stage, for just like generic laning stage. It's obviously bad at both. Uh, it's a nerf to both aspects, but definitely to the stacking stuff will be super nerfed here. Thank you. Um, Enchantress, uh, Impetus, damage increased. This is late game, so basically just a late game buff to Enchantress right clicking. Enchantress is being played similar to Chen. Um, the difference is you don't have the damage bonus. Um, it's still pretty much the same playstyle. OG ran Enchant a lot, so I don't think they'll be upset about this. Um, although they usually aim for early game stuff, not necessarily late game, so I don't think they'll actually care about this buff to the hero, but. If you do like playing Enchantress, this is better better for her. Um, healing Ward movement speed reduced by 50. I think this is actually super fair. The Healing Ward is really hard to kill if you're a melee hero right now. If you're a ranged hero, it's t totally doable, but melee heroes have a lot of trouble dealing with it. So, and Jug is still, Jug is still pretty good as a hero, so I think this is a fine nerf. Um, Tidebringer no longer provides a bonus on denies. I think this kind of needed to happen. It was a little bit too busted. Um, you'd get bonus damage as long as you didn't use it. You could power deny pretty much constantly. Um, it was just a little bit too abusive, I think. Um, you should still be able to last hit really well. Tide, uh, Kunkka will still basically be the same, but it's basically taking away the ability for Kunkka to just power deny in, like, wreck lanes, which is usually why heroes like this get picked a lot anyways. Um, Kunkka and who's another example? Uh, remember, like, Drow getting nerfed for, for her damage bonus? All those things are, are just a little bit too strong laning, so it uh, is going to take Kunkka, make Kunkka less of a, a guaranteed strong hero against certain matchups um, while still retaining what's good about the hero. Uh, life stealer strength gain is reduced. The hero is still pretty good. Um, he's gotten a lot of strength gain nerfs actually. Strength gain used to be a lot higher, like closer to 4 I think before he started getting nerfed, but he's a little bit worse now. Um, Lina's talents are being buffed in both sides at level 20. She's actually been buffed quite a bit recently. Um, this isn't that much difference though. This is a 5% attack speed buff. Or 5 attack speed buff, so that's, what, 13, 15 attack speed? When you have 3? 
15 extra. That's almost nothing. But it's a tiny buff. And then the spell amp also buffed. I kind of like the spell amp one. That build look is kind of enjoyable. Um, I haven't tried Lena's support in a while, though. I imagine it's still garbage. But... I don't know. Probably fun to mess around with it if you can get it to work. Uh, Clips max beams increased by one at all levels, so this is pretty nice. It'll be a lot easier to use this when there's more units or a creep wave or something. Much higher chance you get beams on targets you want. Lycan is very strong. Strength gain reduced. Intelligence gain increased for Medusa, actually, so that's a buff to her. Kind of interesting. Uh, maybe she saw too big of a drop in win rate after they changed mana shield to level 25. So they're upping her intelligence gain to compensate. Um, she still has a terrible int gain or strength gain. And this isn't like the best ink gain. Um, but this will definitely give her more mana pool. Make her shield better. Uh, Meepo getting a little bit of buff. A little bit of a buff. Not much. But um, slightly more agility over the course of the game. And a little bit more strength. Not very much. Just a tiny amount. Um... Although, keep in mind that Meepo does level up really fast, so strength and agility bonuses will actually make a difference. Mm. Run intelligence increased. Um, I think this is needed. She has really shitty base mana. It'll make playing her as like a support more viable. Although some teams do still pick her. But, man, this is actually atrocious intelligence gain. 1.7 before. That's actually insane. Really limited her ability to cast spells early on. But this is a difference of what... 24 mana here. And over the course of 20 levels, it's like two more int, so it's like 48 more mana late game. It's really not that much, but, you know, these little kinds of tiny buffs will make a difference sometimes. Mischief now makes you immune to damage briefly rather than invulnerable. Okay, so what this means is you can mischief dodge my stun, but you will still get stunned. Whereas before, if you timed it perfectly, you would fully disjoint, basically, because you'd be invulnerable. When you're invulnerable, things don't affect you. So, it means the same if there's an AoE nuke. As long as it's a stun, um, you will uh, still be stunned. You just will be able to stop the damage. That's a really good um, solution to this, basically. That won't make it as easy to just, like, outplay certain heroes. I'm a fan. Um, Morphling strength gain increased which is uh, more stats that you can transfer to agility, so this is essentially agility bonus, you could argue. So, not bad for Morphling. Morphling was selectively picked, actually, at we play to great effect against what heroes? Um, against Terrorblade. It was really good against Terrorblade. Uh, that was at ESL, actually. But there were some other games where Morphling was really effective against, like, Life Stealers. Nature's Call Tree and Damage Reduced. Um, Nature's Prophet has been... Um, a very strong hero in this patch in terms of being able to set early game tempo and it's been played as support and cores uh, So a nerf to the tree damage in the early game. I think is really really fair um, People usually still max out nature's call first anyways, but this will definitely justify it a little bit more Not that it's that much of a damage increase. They'll still have equal damage or tankiness, but um, Excited for pango to get nerfed uh, no longer triggers off pangolier illusions You could buy manta style and get a lot of lucky shot procs and the slow is also reduced. Uh, but Lucky Shot's quite good right now. Definitely better than the old Pango uh, passive. Where it would uh, reduce your armor all the way. I find this more annoying as a support. Because when he's chasing me. It's uh, very easy for him to mess me up in a strong way. Either a slow or a, or a silence. Uh, disarm silence? Is it disarm silence? Can't remember. Um... Phantom Assassin, agility gain reduced, so a little bit of less natural attack speed. Phantom Rush bonus agility increased at all levels, so a little buffs to PL. Base intelligence increased by 3 with the base damage the same, so that means she has 36 more mana. And Sonic Wave damage increased by 20 at all levels, so little buffs to Quap. Ricky base movement speed increased by 5, this is huge, because we're talking about some um, big cascading effects in terms of percentage based... Um, movement it, like once you go grab boots for example you're gonna be a lot faster but ricky has basically basically been on touch for a while now i feel like um sand king base int increased by three that's also really needed that hero has a really garbage base mana it's like low tw 200s i think but that's like what 36 mana sand king stats all around are really garbage actually his agility gain is really bad his strength gain is good but his ink gain is kind of bad so he's just kind of like a it's kind of a weird hero 
but um yeah, I haven't really played him I don't think since I since they changed his um um sandstorm I don't think but I don't I don't think he really functions as a support anymore unfortunately he's another one of those like better as offlane heroes kind of um shadow fiend base strength increased by two that's 40 HP that's pretty good it'll help help in his laning uh shackles cooldown increased gotta level it up to scale it down can't abuse it as well early on um headshot damage is buffed I'm a big fan of sniper buffs 10 damage at all levels and shrapnel charge replenish rate improved a little bit uh this is okay it's not like the most impactful thing but this is kind of a lot of damage actually 30 damage is pretty big in the early game um i haven't played much sniper lately it feels like a lot of heroes are good at gap closing these days maybe i'm wrong but um, base health region increased for Spirit Breaker, so you can roam and support a little bit better. Electro Vortex no longer slows your hero. Okay, that's nice. That's interesting that it's been like that for a very, very long time, but... Um, you basically, you can use Electric Vortex and you won't have to use Ball Lightning afterwards to move, which is important. Because normally it doesn't affect you very much, because you'll, you'll slow them, you'll stun them, you'll be slowed, and then you just Ball Lightning to go do your next thing. But now you don't have to do that, you can actually just... You'll be way better at chasing now, actually. Like, there's, there's no reality where you don't get at least, like, one Electric Vortex semi-early if you plan to fight at all. Because now it's just, like, a one-second stun that doesn't slow your hero for two and a half seconds. Because that's what it used to do before. It would slow your hero for, like, two and a half seconds, I think. Um, which basically meant, like, like I said, you got a Vortex and you got a Ball Lightning. But now it's just a stun. Extra charge. Doesn't slow your hero. You could, like, Vortex a guy and run away, for example. There's just a, that's a, that's a pretty huge buff to the hero, in my opinion. Makes the skill a lot more viable and more mana efficient. So I think that's great. Sven nerfed a little bit too, but not that much. Techies remote mines cooldown reduced by two seconds. Alright, Slacks will be happy. Means you can mine up. I mean, that's a pretty big reduction. It's 20% reduction in cooldown. So you can span these out a little bit faster. And Templar agility gain going up. Refraction bonus damage buffed by five at all levels. Pretty big. Strength gain reduced for Tide. Level 20 talent for Troll is reduced. Troll was actually pretty popular. Both of the tournaments I watched, Ursa movement speed reduced. That was needed. Um, and lots of Viper nerfs, it looks like. Um, agility gain reduced by quite a bit. Another Toxin AoE damage no longer stacks with itself. It's stacked? That was, that's busted. I had no idea that it's stacked. And the mana cost is increased as you level it up. So you can't spam it as much. It's still very good. Certainly still very good. This is like one of those things where you don't necessarily notice it. And when you do, it's kind of like, oh shit. That's busted. Because it lasts for a long time, like 7 or 8 seconds or something. So hypothetically, if you, if you, if you would fight somebody in it, it does a lot of damage actually. For the full duration. Uh, but I think this is more than fair. It's going to make mana problems on the hero a little bit harder if you do max out another toxin. But but this is uh, especially this is definitely one of those things where it, it's going to have a marked effect on the win rate, even though it might seem small. I mean, so will this, and so will so will this, obviously. Uh, poison attack slow reduced, which is pretty fair. Um, if you don't max out poison attack, then you're not going to get the slow benefits. In fact, the skill is just going to be kind of garbage at level one though does like very low damage it's uh very good by like level three level four territory it's it's really good up here but the first level or two is is not very solid uh well we'll see how the skill builds change i know most players are going like i think i saw a lot of like the people just skip corrosive you're, you're passive they go like two three zero kind of a thing and then max out another toxin and use it for like creep wave clearing mid i feel like when i played viper against slacks i should have done that and just instead of like trying to fight him i should have just dropped another toxin to, to out farm him push the mid lane, go back and take the neutral camps. I, c I could have gotten a lot more advantage there. I don't know if we were supposed to jungle at all. I don't think I did jung jungle ever. Uh, Wind Ranger Shackle Shock cooldown reduced by two seconds at all levels. That's pretty nice. And Focus Fire attack speed increased by 25. This doesn't max your attack speed anymore, if you guys didn't know. So this is a, a little increase in damage. It's not bad. And that's the end of the patch. Pretty small. Yeah, Viper's still going to be playable, absolutely. Um, you're probably going to be more reliant on going like Arcane Boots than you were before. 
because of this. But I mean, if you don't even max out another toxin until later, then it doesn't matter. I mean, you should do that because that's what's strong right now. But you're still abusable for sure. But um, this is going to be, this is maybe the biggest nerf. At least early game, tempo-wise. It's going to be a lot harder to get these early kills without allies. Because people just aren't going to stand in your another toxin. Whereas 25% slow, plus your ulti slow, is like, your ulti is like 40%, I think, level 1. Those two, like these two, those two together, by themselves, under another toxin would provide a lot more slow. But now it's pretty garbage. You actually need like multiple points of poison attack before your disable starts getting good. But you kind of just farm with another toxin anyways. Well, that was, uh, that was pretty straightforward. Um, I would describe this as um, very small nerfs. Um, very small adjustments, basically. Nothing really to scream home at. Is that the right term? No, I don't think it is. Um, the Midas is uh, semi-significant, I would say. Nope, still no patch. Okay, cool. Uh, the Kunkka change, um, it's going to be really big in pro scene, yes, because you can't necessarily just pick the hero and rely on on him to, like, dominate your lane. Like, there's going to be more matchups where Kunkka doesn't, like, poop on people, basically. Can't update it patches and shift yet. 